Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our Mother's Day service. And uh, first of all, I want to wish all the mothers uh, have a great Mother's Day and have a great celebration with your family. And uh, whenever I think about mothers, uh, it, it just really brings a smile to me. Because in our hearts, I believe all of us, we love our mothers so much. For all your mothers out there, uh, appreciate all your dedication, all your service, uh, all your hard work to your family. Happy Mother's Day! So for Mother's Day, I usually like to talk about uh, a woman, yeah, a woman in the Bible, a great biblical woman. Today I want to focus on a very powerful woman. Let me first read from the book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 3 to 4. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their life for me, and not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful for them. Priscilla, powerful woman, and her husband Aquila. A dynamic duo. And I love this verse. It says here, Priscilla was a co-worker to Apostle Paul. And then it continues on to say that they risked their life, not only just for Paul, but for all the churches around them. Isn't that incredible to see such a powerful woman of God? Can you imagine? If the Apostle Paul were to be sitting right here and he calls me a co-worker in Christ with him, I would feel so proud of myself. And I, I cannot imagine what he means when they say they risk their life for Paul. Perhaps, you know, it's, uh, it's those situations where Paul went into different cities, preached the word, and then he got what? Persecuted. Right? People were stoning him, were shouting at him, and, and Priscilla and Aquila stepped up to protect Paul. And not only Paul, but all the churches that they serve around them. Such an incredible woman of God. A woman worthy of imitation. You know, I hope all of us, when we look at this woman, Priscilla, and her husband, Aquila, dynamic duo, we will want to imitate their faith, their conviction in Christ Jesus. Today, we're going to look at two things. Her motivation, and then secondly, her faith. Now, when you look at this passage in the book of Romans about Priscilla, you know, Priscilla, in her beginning, wasn't like that. She was not a powerful woman just like what we read here, co-worker of Christ with Paul, and one who dare to risk her life. Her life changed after she met Paul. So let's discover a little bit about Priscilla and her husband Aquila. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 18. Let's read from verse 1. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila a native of Pontius, who had recently come from Italy with his wife, Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, Paul stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greek. You know, this is the time where Paul first met Priscilla and Aquila. The Bible says that uh, they were from the city of Pontius. That's where they were born. But they live in Rome. Pontius to Rome is, is quite far away. It's like from Malaysia all the way to China. And they probably went to Rome because they, they wanted to have a business in Rome. The Bible says they were tent maker. You know, maybe they were making tents for the uh, Roman uh, legions, the army, right? And it was probably a very profitable business. Their name itself, Aquila and Priscilla, are Roman's names. 
when you have a Roman name, it, it points out to you that you are probably a person with status. But yet, there was a persecution towards the Jews in the city of Rome by the emperor, Claudius. And Claudius decided to chase all the Jews out of the city of Rome. I'm not sure what is the persecution, but I think it has to do with Christianity, where Jewish people were fighting with the Christian. Not fighting as fighting, but making trouble for the Christian. And so Claudius shoot them out. And the Bible says that both Aquila and Priscilla ran away from Rome. You know, from here we see that Aquila and Priscilla did not start off to be very courageous in their life. But yet, after meeting Paul and spending time with Paul, their life changed. In fact, there's a little bit more clue in verse 4. It says here, Every Sabbath, he, who is he? Paul. It didn't say they. It says he, Paul, reasoned in the synagogue trying to persuade the Jews and the Greeks alike. So in the beginning, we, we find that it was Paul who was the courageous one, went out there preaching and teaching to the people. You know, perhaps Aquila and Prisa, they did follow and they did go to the synagogue to hear Paul's preaching, but they were not part of the, the group of missionaries that went out to persuade people. Their beginning was quite low profile. They just wanted to be with Apostle Paul. But then something happened. What happened to Aquila and Priscilla? If you read on, after meeting Paul, their lives change. If you go to uh, Acts chapter 18, verse 18, Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off as censure because of a vow he has taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. You know, look at this verse. Something changed. Now, instead of just focusing on their business of being a tent maker, now they decided to go on mission trips with the apostle Paul. When Paul decided to leave Corinth and go to Ephesus, they decided to follow along. Do you see the shift in their hearts? What well, motivated them? What was the thing that changed? Let's read further about Aquila and Priscilla. Let's go to verse 24. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor, taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Do you see that now Aquila, Priscilla, the great powerful woman, began to preach the word powerfully, confidently to Apollos. You know, Apollos was not just an ordinary guy. The Bible says he was well learned, thorough knowledge of the scripture. But yet, Priscilla and Aquila was bold. They were not afraid to teach Apollos the correct way. Do you see the shift from someone who is just you know, running away from Rome, went to the city of Corinth to do their business, to now to become missionaries, preachers, people who will persuade other people, even Apollos himself. So what happened? What was Priscilla's motivation? And that comes to my title, Priscilla from housewife to church builder. What happened? during those times that she spent time with Paul. Let's read in verse 11. That might give you a little bit of clue as to what happened to Priscilla and Aquila. 
So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching the word of God. Paul was in the city of Corinth for one and a half years, 18 months. That is quite a long time. And do you remember in the city of Corinth, who did Paul stay with? Paul stayed with Priscilla and Aquila, the dynamic duo. Priscilla, the powerful woman of God, right? A housewife. And so, what do you think happened within that 18 months that they lived together? I believe during those times, when Priscilla and Aquila was living with uh, Paul, they were able to see Paul's life, his preaching, his serving towards the community, his hard work, his conviction, and seeing how Paul was able to help many people to change. Paul's life impacted Priscilla and Aquila. And not only that, they probably spent time doing Bible study with Paul. Paul probably taught them many things about God, about the Bible, about how God has so much mercy, forgiveness, they began to see the rich mercy of the Lord. And Paul probably talked about God's love and God's glorious inheritance one day for all of us who believe. That is how heaven, salvation. And Paul probably talked about the incomparable great power for all of us who believe in Jesus. And just like in the other gospel where it says that incredible power, incomparable power is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Such an incredible power. You know, Paul probably talked about the righteousness, the pure righteousness that God wants us to have. The sacrifice of Christ. You know, Priscilla, Aquila sat there listening to Paul, hearing and learning absorbing all of them and that probably changed their life 18 months with paul studying in nepal watching paul's life totally turned them around turned priscilla around from being a housewife an ordinary housewife to a church builder we have to ask ourselves here some questions as we look at the example of Priscilla, from housewife to church builder, we all want to grow. Do we also have that keen learning attitude, just like Priscilla, where we're willing to stay with Paul and study up the scriptures, where we're willing to see what is Paul trying to tell us in his letters and have deeper understanding of God? You know, in the book of Ephesians, where it says, Paul prayed that the church will know God better. Is that now your prayer? To know God better? To understand that hope that He has given you. When you truly understand God and His hope that He has for you, your life will totally turn around. You will grow. You'll be more fulfilled as a Christian. Brothers and sisters, are you a keen learner? Are you determined to study the Bible to know the Word of God inside out, just like Priscilla, the woman of God? I know it can be quite challenging at times. When we look at the Bible, we might say, wow, so many words. Looks tough. And then we do not put in our time. Or some of us, we, we rather use our gadgets, right, our handphone, for doing other things playing games, reading our Facebook, rather than digging in into the Word of God. Or some of us might feel like, well, I read the Bible through and through, you know how many times? A lot of times. And so because we have that laser flare attitude, the attitude like, hey, I've done it many times, and you become lazy to search deeply the Word of God. I know for myself, every time I search the Word of God, I find something new, something different that will inspire me. 
You know, brothers and sisters, are you a keen learner of the Word of God? Digging deep, we must be that keen lover so that we can really grow in our faith and our conviction about Christ will be deepened. What else do we see? The Priscilla learned. She saw God through her time with Paul. She understood the rich mercy, the incredible love, the tremendous power of God that was available for us. Her life changed. She saw the gospel of Jesus right in front of her. You know, as you study the Bible, dig deep to know God better. Do you see God's love for you? Do you see His incredible power for you? Do you see His deep mercy for you? Study to know God better. And when you know God better, as I said earlier, your motivation will change. You will want to serve God wholeheartedly. And then you'll find the joy that you want to find in your life and you're in your Christian walk. So that's the first thing that we look at, Priscilla's motivation. What helped her to change from being a housewife to a church builder? The second point I want to look at is Priscilla's faith. I just want to look briefly at how Priscilla served the church and the people around her. Let's go back to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 18, verse 3. And because Paul was a tan maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Though so the first area that we see in Priscilla and Aquila was that they had incredible hospitality. Paul, was he a stranger? I'm not sure. It could be. Or was he a, a good friend? I'm not sure. Either way, they allow Paul to stay with them. Incredible hospitality. And in fact, 18 months. That is a long time. Do we have that incredible hospitality towards our brothers and our sisters in Christ? Do we have that love, that equal concern to serve those that are around us? When we see a brother in need, when we see a sister who is asking for help, do we go out of the way? Like what Jesus taught, the second mile, we go out of the way to serve the other people. And the challenge is, so often in our own life, we tend to be very self-focused. We do not extend ourselves. Let's extend ourselves just like Priscilla in the faith. Incredible hospitality. What else do we see about Priscilla? Let's go to verse 25. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he only knew the baptism of John. He began to speak poorly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Whoa, so incredible, isn't it? You know, Priscilla was eager to preach the word of God. He saw Apollos preaching the word of God, teaching, but Apollos did not understand the word of God properly. And so Priscilla was so eager to preach to Apollos. He says, come Apollos, come with us. Let's study the Bible together. Let me teach you more adequately. Can you imagine a woman with that kind of courage to talk to the knowledgeable man, Apollos? We will be intimidated, right? We'll feel like, wow, what do I know? How can I teach another person? And that is usually what usually stops us from preaching the word of God. We are fearful, we get intimidated, we are afraid of rejection, we are afraid that, hey, if I teach somebody, they will, they will not listen to me, or we are afraid that, hey, do I really know enough to teach somebody? And we're not bold to go out there. Let's imitate Priscilla. She has that eagerness to teach the Word of God. This year, brothers and sisters, this year, 2021, 
Let's us all find somebody, one person where we can teach the Word of God to. Amen? So who is that one person for you? And then in Romans chapter 16, verse 3, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their life for me, and not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful for them. The third area that we can see about Priscilla and Aquila, the dynamic duo, is that they were passionate about the gospel. Why were they passionate? Because they knew the gospel is about salvation. And there are no other good news, no other way we can go to heaven except through Jesus Christ. And they were so fired up to share the good news with the people around them. They were not even afraid to risk their life because they know there's a guarantee, there's a hope of eternal life in heaven. They were passionate about the gospel. They were passionate about the church, serving the church in a great way. Brothers and sisters, are you passionate? Passionate about the gospel of Christ. We all need to be imitating Priscilla, the powerful woman of God, and Aquila, her husband. And finally, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Let's see one more area of Priscilla's faith. In verse 19, it says here, The churches in the province of Asia send you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord. And so does the church that meets at their house. Do you see that? The church that meets in your house. Wow, they were so passionate that they even just started a church in your home. Brothers and sisters, why not? We can start our house churches, spread the gospel through our home. Especially during this time, we are having our pandemic. We are having our lockdown and we, are, we, we cannot go out very easily. You know, use our homes, be hospitable, Use our homes to reach out to people. But the one thing that I want to focus on, Priscilla and Aquila, is that Bio says they what? They greet the church warmly. Incredibly warm. That is what we see in Priscilla and Aquila. They were incredibly warm people. They love deeply. You know, when you spend time with brothers and sisters, do they feel like you are such a person? That you feel with kindness, love, warm, and grace. And we need to be. We need to imitate Jesus, imitate Paul, imitate Priscilla, to be that kind of brothers and sisters that has warm in our hearts to serve those around us. So brothers and sisters, we look at four things about Priscilla's faith her incredible hospitality, her eagerness to teach, her passion about the gospel, and her incredible warmth. Let's imitate her. Let's be like Priscilla, where, when at the very end of the day, if Paul were to write a letter about us, he could say, you, brothers and sisters, you, me, tech me, we are his co-workers when we are so passionate about the work of Christ, the love of Christ, the God, good news of Christ, that we are even willing to risk our life for the gospel. Amen, brothers, sisters. Thank you again for having time together. And for all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. I'll see you again. Bye.